him first off, obviously you've played the last two games now. What's it like being back? Yeah, um, it's always good to be out on the pitch. Just as a footballer, that's all you want to do is is regular games and regular training. Um, so yeah, very happy to be back. Any ill effects from the injury? No, at the minute I feel really good. Um, the medical team have been really good with me. The manager's been good um, in terms of giving me time to recover. So yeah, I feel really good. The manager, when you was missing, along with a couple of others, called you part of the, the golden triangle. Uh, what's it like to have that praise from the manager? Yes, yeah, brilliant. Um, it's a, a massive confidence booster. Um, I think from the time I've come into Lincoln, the manager's um, put a bit of added pressure on my on myself in terms of um, being in control of the group. And yeah, it's good to know that uh, the manager puts me in such high, high regards, really. And you are the, the captain. How do you treat that role? Are you a captain who, who leads by example? Or are you a captain who, who likes to, to talk to the players and, and communicate? Both. Um, I think if, if I'm 100% and I'm given 100%, I think the boys will follow. Um, and I'm always there for, um, for the lads in terms of talking, in terms of uh, I've got that bit of extra experience. So if the lads uh, need that bit of knowledge or or um, help with anything, I'm, I'm always there and always open to help the lads. There's a lot of talk in the Premier League at the moment about the amount of fixtures that are, that are happening for, for footballers. Personally, do you feel like it's too much at the moment, the amount of games you're having to, to fit into this season, or are you just enjoying being involved in football once again? No, yeah, definitely enjoying it. I think we've, we've, we've been for a, a tough period at, um, uh, not getting the games and things like that, so everyone's been looking forward to it. I think there is a lot of games in a short period, but um, it's going to be difficult because we know we've got such a small squad at the minute. Um, but every game everyone looks forward to and enjoyable. But I think the lads would much rather have as many games as we can, really. And as you've got older, have you had to change the way you, you look after yourself in recovery between games? Uh, no, I've... That, I've Probably kept the same in terms of recovery. I've always uh, recovered quite well. Um, I always look after myself. Uh, over the last probably a year or so, I've um, made a conscious decision to to try and lose a little bit of uh, weight in terms of muscle and fat, um, just so it's a bit easier for myself to carry around the pitch, obviously, as I'm getting older. Yeah, it's quite. I guess as a player, you, you do have to, to do, make your own decisions at times, don't you, and, and decide yeah. what's best for you? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think as you get older, you need to adapt, and uh, and the way the game is at the minute, you need to be be able to cover distance and uh, and be be ready for every game coming up. And are you someone then who who takes on the sports science, who sees it as a real worthwhile benefit? Yeah, definitely. I think um, in terms of during a week of, with the sessions, and I think uh, like I said, the staff here are, are, are really good in terms of knowing how much load we need um, and if we're getting too much load to, to tone it down really. So we're, we're quite lucky as a group to have um, uh, good, good members of staff and, and very professional. Certainly spending a lot of time on the bus in the next few days, including from, from Saturday. How do you keep yourself entertained? Uh, how are you at? <laughs> Eight usually. <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, just listen to his stories or... <laughs> or in match uh, ripping everyone to bits, so that uh, usually keeps us entertained. I was going to say, I guess it's good to have people like that in the group, isn't it? Because it can seem a, a long slog, I guess, especially you know this weekend with with Plymouth on the agenda. Yeah, definitely. We know we're going to be um, we're in a, a difficult point at this moment in terms of in terms of the travel, but um, I think everyone's in the. Everyone's going to have to go for it at some point, so we're not going to make excuses for it. Um, we're just, just going to try and prepare as best as we can. And like we said, we've got a gr good set of lads what well, we can keep each other entertained and uh, have quite a bit of a laugh. And are you one of the, the bad boys on the back row? Or are you more of a teacher's pet sitting at the front with the manager? I'm in the middle, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, I'll get involved now and again with a bit, but um, yeah, like I said, the all the lads are a, a good group, um, not got bad, one bad lad. So it's, we, we all enjoy each other's company. So. 
Lovely. Cheers, Liam. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Morning, Liam. Um, Morning. Obviously, you're a very experienced player. You've played at a variety of levels. In terms of the start you've had, yeah. have you overachieved as a team? Um, if, you, if you're looking at uh, probably finances, yeah, we have. I think if, if you're going off of the, the wage bill, we've massively overachieved. But if you're if you're looking at it in terms of the manager that we've got and the, the group of players that we've got, I think um, no, we, our expectations are, are high, and we know we know what we're capable of, and um, we know it's going to be a, a process over a, the number of years. But um, at the minute, I think we're massively overachieving in terms of uh, budgets and things like that. If you're looking at uh, the wage bill across the, the, the well, across the league, really. And in terms of trying to maintain the current position, is avoiding injuries or as many injuries as possible going to be key, given the squad? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think in terms of the, the size of the squad, we haven't got the biggest squad. I mean, we know that. And um, and we know as a group and, and the staff, of, like I said, in terms of the load that we're getting and the, the training that we're getting, it's just making sure everyone's ready for each game. Um, a few weeks ago, the club put out a statement uh, saying that the club was the players were no longer going to initiate the taking of the knee before games. Um, I think you were party to those conversations. Looking from the outside, it looked like it was handled very sensitively. Um, how was it from your point of view? Yeah, it was very professional um, in terms of how how the club approached it. In terms of speaking to myself and other players, um, I've had it, uh, previous interviews about it. I think it. It wasn't that we was not going to take the knee for, for whatever reason. It was more of a case that we feel like we can do more. And I think the, taking the knee has uh, almost come, become almost like a, a brand, really. And we didn't want that. We wanted to, uh, we wanted to do more. Um, we want to educate people. And um, we know we can do more as a, as, as a club, really. And in football in general, obviously, it's been a difficult year from that point of view. Do you think football is making the right strides as we try and sort of stamp out discrimination? Um, it's hard to say, really, because we've, we've had sh uh, show racism, the red card, probably, what, over 10 years ago now or longer. And we're still getting the same issues. And that's why the club now have decided that, we're going to go out into the community and we're going to start pushing more to educate people. And, and you're keen, obviously, to play, play a major part in that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.